Hello everyone, welcome on this beautiful evening. Most of you know me, my name is Simone Louise and Bert and I are really blessed to be in Byron Bay and have this webinar, webinar in our beautiful beach apartment. So thank you for choosing Say Yes to Love, thank you for coming on tonight. I deeply appreciate your time and I really want to value that. So in the first 45 minutes we'll go through some beautiful slides and some affirmations and some quotes and also two key points that have assisted my journey the last 10 years as I've mentored thousands of beautiful ladies um, on, their, on their love journey. Know that this time is for you so um, please um, you know, write in the box, know that it's interactive, um, participate as much as you, as much as you want um, and in the last 15 minutes will be very much Q&A. Uh, a couple of beautiful ladies have already emailed me today so I'll definitely honour that and question, um, bring that up. If you feel that that's not the space that you'd like to ask these questions, I deeply understand. So please in the next 24, 48 hours you're very welcome to email me and I'll get back to you um, ASAP. So part of the focused in the journey tonight of the reason why I put the webinar on is because I am writing a book and the book is called Say Yes to Love and I mainly work with beautiful women that are um, career driven um, entrepreneurs but they're predominantly around the age between 30 and 40 that really would love marriage and really love, would love children. So tonight is about very much opening up that heart space and that emotional space to see how available that you are. I'm going to give you some quick tips and some great takeaways that, that you already know the answer, but I really value that the fact that you're here tonight to be able to very much honour that. So in this next hour or so, I really encourage you to sit back and relax. We often think sometimes up to 120,000 thought processes a day and most of them are negative. So if you have your phone, you know, my encouragement is to even turn it off or put it on silence and just have this time to nurture yourself. There's in background distractions with um, TV, you know, if you don't want to turn it off, mute it or any of that, just take this time and even if you've got your inbox open, you just want to close that down and just have this, this moment for yourself. So my background is I was born in Singapore and I spent most of my life in Perth and the last 10 years uh, it's been a glorious journey because I was able to be in Sydney and do all of my intuitive mentoring but also to meet Merv. Um, what's important for me especially for you tonight, is the asking and the receiving. So I really value in our own intuitive way. We all set different intentions and prayers and we all send a signal, signal to universe. And I really appreciate the fact that we're gathered here. So in your own way you've asked and I'm the messenger and we're all here to support each other on our journey. So if you've asked for this, and then I also would say to you that in asking for love and building for love, then it's all very much there. So be open tonight to receive. Receive new ideas, receive new information, receive support, clarity, love, lightness. Just be open for that. Because the more that we're open to be able to receive, the more that we can um, be able to draw in everything that's important to us. This is a picture of myself, of Louise L. Hay. And when I said to you before that I was back in Perth, it was the book You Can Heal Your Life completely transformed how I thought, how I created, and what was important to me. So. It was such an honour to be able to meet her a couple of years ago. The cool thing about this book is my mum actually had it on her coffee table when I was young. And it had that beautiful rainbow love heart and it soothed me every time that I walked past it. 
I never actually picked it up until I was about 27. And my friend and I used to work together and play netball also as well. And she just said, you know what? We're having a study group at Cheryl's place. Do you want to come? And I was completely fascinated that there was a book that we could go and dissect. So it was a Thursday night and I get there and there's probably about six or seven ladies in the room and I knew that I had come home. I cried bucket loads that night. Uh, the lady, her name was Mary Heath, and I just looked at her and I just sort of said in my head, I don't know what she's doing, but I want to do exactly what, what she was doing. And that was like my turning point. Up to that period, I could say to you that I was an angry child and an angry teenager and even an angry adult. And I walked around with all of this self-judgment and punishment because of the things that I thought and the things that I created and projected. This book allowed me to give me deep peace and I felt that that was something that was my miracle and also saved my life. So in that beautiful turning point, I knew that I absolutely had to share that message with everyone. So I became a Louise L. Hay teacher pretty fast and then moved to Sydney and I've done heaps of talks and festivals and expos and that's the reason why the part of the book journey is because the last 10 years I've been saying certain things about relationships and I'm no expert but I know though that how I attracted Merv uh, eight years ago, these are the tips and tools and the processes that I want to be able to share. This worksheet that's in front of you now, and don't feel that you have to do it, there was a couple of people that actually have sent me a few of their ideas and their processes. Um, what I can very much do is send this to you by email. What happened probably about four weeks ago, a lady that I was mentoring, she's about 35 and she really does want marriage and she really does want children. And throughout, towards our end of our um, mentoring program, I really wanted her to um, feel results, feel loved and feel like she had progressed. So what I had done is I had sat down in a quiet moment and just really thought of her in a loving way, in a loving space and how I could possibly get through to her soul. And so the first part was what happens if it doesn't happen? And sometimes when Merv has said this to me, it's never been as an ammunition, it's never been um, as anything more as, as just him sharing that and coming very much from the logic. Myself being very creative and working on infinite projects, there is no what happens if it doesn't happen. Um, my deadline that I, that I have is just something that I enjoy to be able to, to work towards. So I know that what happens if it doesn't happen absolutely fuels me. And that doesn't fuel me from fear, it just fuels me from energy and momentum. So part of the beginning bit was very much about, well, if you don't have that relationship and you don't attract that ideal relationship and you don't have the children or the marriage and all the things that you had envisaged as a small child and all the way growing up to where the age that you are now, how would your life be? Would it be different? Would you be happy? Would you still be grateful? And the reason why I, I um, share this worksheet with you is because I really want everything to be a beautiful transition and a beautiful part of a synergy. You see, the whole part of the Louise L. Hay philosophy was always about when and waiting. So if I drop the 50 kilos, then I'll be happy. If I meet my perfect knight in shining armour, then I can be happy. If I get the perfect job, the perfect house, then I can be happy and grateful. And there's lots of wins and lots of whys and lots of blocks in between. And I really believe that life is now and life is about having that inspired reason. So just, you know, if you, if you do do this um, sheet and I send it to you, we think in pictures. So look at the outcome that you'd like to receive. How would it feel to be in that relationship? How would it feel to be in his arms? How would it feel 
to have beautiful conversations each day when you wake up in the morning and that's the first person that you see or when you go to bed that's the last person that you see and you hug and that you hold. So happy to be able to send that to you but these part of these questions are here to help you pull that through. I always believe that every day is a New Year's resolution and how this last six, seven months has gone by, we can all question where has our time been, what have we been thinking, what have we been creating. So in this moment now, if you have a piece of paper or pen, just check in. Just take a deep breath in and out. I always believe that our solar plexus and our body is like a truth monitor and always tell you how you're feeling. So just write that word of how you're feeling. If you can remember at the beginning of the year, what did you think that was already going to happen? By June, yes, that, was, that, that definitely would have happened. So what we can do is we can very much reset our intentions. What would you like to receive in December 2013? What would you like to have happen? What must happen at all costs? Every day is a New Year's resolution. So what you decide at the beginning of this year, let's see if we can now somehow be able to bring that and create that. In seeing so many ladies in the last over the last 10 years, the top question that they always asked me was, when's he going to come? And a part of, I guess, how I've tuned in on my intuition and being able to kind of be a bit more clearer as each person that I saw, I would feel and sense their readiness. So what I did recently is I did this love quiz and the same thing. I'm very happy to send it to you by email. It's fun, it's loving, it's light, yes, but it gives you a good track to where you're at. Imagine now staring at your blank wall and that there's nothing on there. I really believe our helpers and universe come each day and they ask, what is it that you want? What can I bring for you today? And if we don't know in our hearts really what we're wanting and what we're wanting to create and how we'd like to have this ideal relationship come, then they go. And so that's the part of our intention tonight is that we're all here live on this webinar, myself in Byron and everyone else in different parts of Australia and the world. So part of the love quiz is to see your readiness. What is it that you want? And also to what is it that you don't want? What is it that you would not tolerate anymore? Being women, most of us have got that beautiful heart space that we give and give and give and that we love and that we're here and that we're there to nurture. So part of it is, is what would you not tolerate anymore? On um, one of the questions is, it's one of my favourites, is your non-negotiable. And so when you get clear on what you really, really want, it's also getting very, very clear on what you don't want also. I like this question also as well as, are you happy? Are you balanced? Every part of our lives needs to have that same part of integrity. So gently look at every area of your life, your finances, your home. Be mindful not to put things off because sometimes when I also... Uh, work with ladies, I often hear them say, well, when he comes, we can do that together. And when that happens, and we can do this together. When you are in that beautiful relationship, you'll be doing so many other different things. And what happens is, is when you move towards the things that you know that you're meant to be doing, then it also brings things stronger to you and it brings it to you faster. In part of my book, there are seven very simple steps that I've put and I'm just going to glean it now 
And so step one is connect to your why. I really like a man whose name is Simon and his surname is Senek, S-I-N-E-K. And even if you YouTube him and his book, it's really a fantastic concept. And when I, um, one of the first part of the mentoring questions that we'll go through is, is do you know what your why is? You know, it's like, why do you want to be in a relationship? So my encouragement is, you know, it's amazing that when you do a lot of journaling because it gets released, but also to this journal here can be very much referred. So my encouragement is to start with 20. You're very welcome to send me those 20. I would probably even then push you to even do more. My um, writing coach, is, his name's Andrew, and he's written 12 books. And I remember a little while ago he said to me, Simone, even though you write and that you blog, you know your value to write is not very high. He goes, I'd really like you to sit down and let's see if we can just change this. And if you can write down 200 reasons why you want to be a published author, then that would be fantastic. And I love a challenge. So <laughs> I thought, wow, that's really fantastic. And I sat down and it's definitely helped me to pivot and be a stronger writer. So I like using analogies. We think in pictures. Imagine us all now going tenting. And my job is to pitch the tent for the 10 of us tonight. And each one has a different task. And when you come back an hour later, you look at it and you go, wow, that 10, that looks fantastic. That's the illusion. Maybe at 2 a.m. because I didn't pitch it enough, that tent flies away because of the weather and because of my non-tenting skills. And we end up feeling very cold and very wet. So part of it is, is when you know your why, it doesn't end up being like a New Year's resolution. Because a New Year's resolution, we often only check back once. And that checking back once will be in 2014 when you go, oops, I thought that I'd already be married or in a relationship or have children or be living with him. It doesn't really matter what it is. But the part of it is when you know your why, that anchor will be so strong that that tent cannot be ripped from you, okay? So that's the first part. Know your why. Nothing then will distract you from that. Um, once you've written down your whys, then you can send it to me, and then I'm going to take you through part B. The thing that I love the most about Louise was that she would say to me and to the group that if you can't love yourself, then start liking yourself. And that's always stayed really dear to me because, you know, it's such a cliched form, you know, if you love yourself, then everyone else will love you. I like breaking it down of going, okay, I can start liking myself. She also uses a wonderful mantra and affirmation of I'm willing. And even if you started with that is I'm willing, and then you can add I'm willing to like myself today. Um, Sometimes we can beat ourselves up and we can be our own worst critic and we can punish ourselves for the most smallest things. So our inner world always creates the outer world. And there's nothing more beautiful when you are with people that have got that loving vibe and that beautiful confidence because of their part of their inner world starts to shine. So that's step two. Just be free, loving yourself and liking yourself. Step three is how to be confident. Confidence is the ability to feel beautiful without needing anyone's validation or approval to tell you that. And I think that's the part of working with women that have got amazing businesses and careers is that they're rock solid in their field. They're an expert. They're strong, they're confident, they've worked really hard to get to that spot. And I really want you to be able to transfer that same energy and that same vibrance into your love life because sometimes we allow other people to prop us up 
And I always say that everything, like the weather changes, so you change and grow and he will change and grow and you may be away and he may be away and everything is about the flow and the flexibility. And if we look on that as one person to give us their happiness and their source, we'll always be relying on it. So start with the inner, allow that confidence to shine and allow to be confident also too with your choices. This one here is how to practice gratitude. I'm so passionate about having a gratitude journal. I really feel that it sets the tone of the day. There's so many things to be grateful for in the now. And so my encouragement is to really start with at least five in the morning. I'm always fascinated that when you wake up, that we're still breathing, that we went through that five hours or seven hours of sleep and that we wake up. So in practicing that gratitude in the now, look for things that you can be really appreciative of the hot shower, the comfy bed, the water, the food, your family, your friends, your eyesight, the sunshine, money. There are so many things in the now. The thing that I'd also like you to encourage is after you've written your five, is to start to practice gratitude in the future. So what is it that you would like to receive if we come back to that beginning bit of what are you willing to receive tonight? Ideas, information, joy, support, friendship, clarity, love. So what is it that you feel that you don't actually have now? What do you feel that you're lacking? And so when you start to practice gratitude in the future, thank you for the peace. Thank you for the support. Thank you for my most amazing partner. Thank you for the great conversations that we have. Thank you for the hugs. Thank you for the new money flow. Thank you for the new job. What you will find is that you will always be thanking universe in your journal. It is the most amazing concept. You'll find that you're thanking in the now and that you're thanking in the future. And it all becomes one. So, if you can just now on your pieces of paper, just take another deep breath in and out. And just write down three things that you're thankful for right now. Have a look at your day. What showed up for you? What did you ask? Just take another deep breath in and out. What would you like to receive in the future? Know that you're deserving. Know that you're worthy. And just write those three bullet points down now. And if you feel like putting a few things in the comment box you're very welcome to otherwise if it's in your journal then that's fantastic but the great thing about it is that the more that you practice gratitude the more fullness that you'll start to feel one thing that i did a few years into our relationship it's I started to thank Merv and my gratitude for helping me around the house, whether it was the dishes or the vacuuming. It was my little secret way of asking him from a detached way. And I thought that was the most amazing thing was that he started to do the things that I had asked him to do in my gratitude. And that was very much about projection and I just sort of went, wow, this, this stuff absolutely works. And the great thing about it was when your belief system has that energy and has that level of receiving, you actually don't have to keep asking. So I stopped writing, thank you for helping me with this, this, and this, because it became a, a natural habit for him, but it also became a natural habit that I was willing 
for him willing for myself to receive that. This one here, step five, be financially independent. I find that it helps to ground where you're at and I find that when you're in a relationship that are you generating your own money and him generating his money, that there's a stronger partnership. I think that the worst thing that could possibly, one of the worst things that could happen is fighting over money in the most smallest way or the biggest way. I have a lovely lady in the UK and she's very successful in what she does. And she's sort of put a blind eye, I guess, or a little bit in denial that a couple of times when her husband has gone into debt, it's like it's not my problem, it's not my business, he will have to sort it out. But the whole thing about that is it puts strain on the relationship and she really wants to have children and that's just one big hurdle that's in the way is because of the money flow, that she has money flow but he doesn't. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I see other ladies also as well that have amazing money flow and then when they're in that new relationship, the money starts to disappear. And I'm not saying that um, they're lending money or giving away money, but something, a part of the imbalance starts to happen. So just know that if you start to be in a new relationship and your money has been fantastic and it's been strong, and then it just starts to disappear and it feels imbalanced or you're taking work off, work, taking time off work to spend time with him. All of those things lower your self-esteem. It all lowers your confidence and your ability to have that equality. So my belief is that there's nothing more stronger or sexier or more in command or more in charge is that when you have your money um, out trip to Byron is very impromptu. It was probably only a couple of days ago that we had decided and such a nice feeling like for a very, very long time I've carried my passport um, with me <laughs> to have that ultra freedom that I could be where I want to be and where I want to go um, at that time. So this leads into step six is have the freedom to be who you are and feel free. So the passport scenario is the one that um, allows me to travel wherever I want to go with Murph and also on, on my, with myself. Um, there's a, a couple that I work with from time to time and he absolutely loves the snow and she absolutely loves the, the sunny weather. This freedom also too is there's nothing more beautiful than feeling free when you actually are single. Um, there are so many things that you can do when you have that freedom. When you coming home and you can put the key in the door and just if you're really feeling like you're wanting that space and that quiet time and that silence is there. Also, too, that when you're in a relationship, you really want to simulate that you don't feel like you're giving up anything, that you have that freedom to go where you want and where you want to be. So my encouragement is, is to enjoy where you're at now. But when you're in that relationship, that first time when it's new, is still have your hobbies, still have the things that are important to you, still have your family and friends and likewise for him to have that. We often give up our sense of freedom and who we are as people and it puts a lot of strain on each other and and also too it, it builds that um, gap of separation. So know the partner that you're with that you've attracted him for that reason, for that sole reason for you to be able to grow both together and that the person that you're with has that magnificence and that authenticity that you've been attracted to. 
So feel free now as being single, feel free being in the relationship, feel free with every part of it because the biggest thing that um, we sometimes feel trapped is through our thoughts and so sometimes we feel like we have to get away and part of that bridging is um, what I find is that if people really want to be in a relationship you know they keep saying it over and over again I really I'm ready I'm ready I really want to be in this relationship and then they get in that relationship and they kind of go this is not really what I thought it would be I feel trapped I feel suffocated I feel smothered <laughs> I want to get out. <laughs> I just want to feel freedom. So whatever led you to that path or whatever led you to, to be there in the first place, now is the purpose of you trying to run away and to get out of that. And I just touched lightly on this, is that the fact that sometimes um, you will hear me say sometimes in the book or my articles or even an email is about the reptile brain or the monkey brain and I always say there's only two emotions there's either love or there's fear and love is what brought us here tonight and love will keep us together and love is the answer and love is the key and we thrive on love and it's so important that we have this love and this nurturing from ourselves, and of course from our, our partner and our beloved. But that cheeky reptile brain and that monkey brain that has been in part of our DNA and our cellular structure for such a long time gets switched off and it gets turned on and it allows us to react. And so whether you call it fear or whether you call it ego, it wants to separate us and its job is to keep us stuck in the past. It wants to build obstacles. It wants to make you wrong. And it wants to make others wrong. So when you flip-flop from your decisions, then usually the ego has stepped in and the reptile brain has been switched on. But when you come from love and when you come from peace and when you come from trust and from knowing, you are always in the right place at the right time with the right people. If you're not in a relationship now, it's because you choose not to be. Love that choice, love that freedom, and love who you are. My encouragement, every couple of hours just check in. We've checked in a couple of times being on this webinar together. Our thoughts and our feelings and our actions all become one. And if our thoughts are inspiring, and our thoughts want to move towards our ideal partner, then, we're going to, then we are going to feel great. And if we feel great and we feel alive and we feel full, then we're going to take the actions and we're going to take the steps. So part of that process is knowing that there is only two emotions, love or fear. Every day, just keep asking yourself, what would love do? What would love do in this circumstance? What would love do here? And you know when you're in the flow. You know when you're in the flow that when you wake up in the morning and every thought or feeling and action is so in alignment that everyone smiles at you, everyone is supportive, person that you think of texts us back straight away you're always in the right place at the right time you know when you're not in the flow is when you wake up feeling tired grumpy wanting to sleep some more 
or what's the point starting the day or what's the point even wanting to be in a relationship you feel heavy and you feel burned and you feel obligated usually when you're not in the flow there are usually lots of delays and lots of hiccups and drama and chaos around you so thank you everyone again for being here on this webinar. Thank you for trusting and choosing love and lightness and, and clarity. This one here is be emotionally available. The last half an hour has been the past and it can never, ever be brought back and so many times the reptile or the monkey brain wants to remind you of all the things that you said that you were going to do it wants to race to the future and it doesn't like living in the now but my encouragement that when you are in the now feeling kind and attentive and loyal and supportive and strong and honest and happy and helpful all of those emotional qualities and values that part of the soul tank and the love tank is what keeps you full and keeps you thriving so being emotionally available is not getting triggered by the past is not living in the past That whole process in the next couple of weeks is as you check in every couple of hours is what am I thinking, what am I feeling, what actions am I taking, what's my environment, who is supporting me, how can I feel full today, how can I be emotionally available. At the beginning of the webinar when I was saying that to turn the phone off or the TV and just let all the distractions go. So much does the ego want us to jump out of us. And when I say stay in, stay into the core of you is the most warmest, nurturing, delicious place and the yummiest place that you could ever be. And if you jump out, and you jump back into fear and you jump back into ego then it takes you away from love and it takes you away from your intuition because when you are in your intuition it's everything about being now the last two three partners that you chose was for your highest purpose and your highest learning lesson you came together for those lessons. Both of you were doing the best that you could. Trust in the last two years that you have changed and that you have evolved. Give yourself a break. Give yourself permission to breathe. Give yourself permission to open your heart clear the mind, clear the clutter, make room for your future partner. See there was no mistake us being here together tonight and so my encouragement and my inspiration that you must take is to know that he is waiting for you as well. Part of my book philosophy is for you not to have to wait. That waiting is a choice. Come back to you now. What have you learnt in the last two years about yourself and the relationships that you've chosen? How have you changed?
What have you learned from these past relationships? What's been different about them? Just take a deep breath in and out. We're always here to improve ourselves and we're always here to do the best that we can. What are you willing to change? What parts of you would you like to wish away? What qualities would you like to strengthen? If your past partners now could just share a few things about you from a soul level, what do you think that they would say? If there were any things there that you struggled with or anything there that put a strain or anything there that was to trigger just be gentle with yourself and again be reminded that as you move forward that you are healed and that you are whole. And the whole consensus of liking yourself, loving yourself, appreciating yourself strengthens every part of you. If you could truly see the magnificence that I see and the awesomeness that I feel from you all. Each one I know you, whether I've done a session or seen you on Facebook, each one of you I know. This part here is from a little snippet from Louise L. Hay. It's just that reminder is can you remember the last time that you were in love? such a wonderful feeling. It's the same thing with loving yourself except that you wouldn't believe and once you have love for yourself it's with you for the rest of your life so you want to make it the best relationship that you can have and that's why I dearly appreciate you being on this webinar is because the journey is forever and I know that in the eight years that I've journeyed with Merv I really feel like I've been in a workshop every day. How can I grow? How can I be kinder to myself? How, how can I be kinder to him? How can I be thoughtful? So in combining liking yourself and loving yourself, that's a journey that stays with you forever. The great thing about it is when you do your journaling work and your gratitude and different processes and meditation and yoga and walking and, and just being. All of those great feelings emanate through every part 